The next to last training camp practice is over. It's finished. It's in the books. Four big takeaways from this one headed your way. We start with the running back position battle. Look, I know that Joe Mixon is number one, but I can't tell you two through four after that. I believe the Texans are going to keep four running backs. But right now, today, I can't tell you who number two, number three, or number four is. I've got who I would pick, but I can't for sure pick out exactly what the Texans are going to do. I feel strongly that Daria Gumbawale is going to be one of those three running backs behind Joe Mixon. But after that is Damian Pierce. Is it Jawar Jordan and British Brooks? Is it Cam Akers, J.J. Taylor? There's a lot of different ways they can go. I do find it fascinating, the conversation around Damian Pierce's preseason performance. D'Amico Ryans and Titus Howard sticking up for Damian Pierce. Listen to this. Yeah, Damian, he just, we got to get him some ops in the game, you know, to get him some more ops running the football. But Damian's done a great job out here at practice. I don't think everybody's seen that in the game because, you know, when he had his opportunities, we got guys unblocked in the hole, so he doesn't have a chance to really get started. So, you know, we just have to give him more opportunities, but we have to block it better up front so he does have opportunities to make some plays in a running game. He ain't got that many reps. And uh, he didn't get that many reps with the starters, too. So, I mean, you got to play that, put that into play. So, uh, we didn't really run the ball that much last game. It was a lot of pass plays. So, I um, mean, he's been putting work in that practice. So, you know, a lot of people – not seeing that, so they only can see what they see, you know, when we go out on the game. So, I mean, you it can't really, like, judge them off that. There's a small sample size and stuff that he's done and the work he put in, so uh, he's going to be just fine. Look, it hasn't looked good in the preseason games. It's looked okay in practices, not great by any means. I would tell you that Cam Akers, in the totality of the time that the two have been teammates, has looked better than Damian Pierce to this point. Same with Dare Agumba Wale, but the coaches – and the players get to see the film, get to break it down. And if Pierce is indeed executing and the guys around him aren't executing, then he's got every consideration to make this roster. I do wonder if we see Damian Pierce play a lot. Miko Ryan's talked about get him some reps. If we see Damian Pierce play a lot in the final preseason game, that is not a good indication of his status and standing on this team. Now, obviously, someone's got to play. It can't just be Jawar Jordan and British Brooks the whole time. You know, J.J. Taylor and Cam Akers should be in there. And I would think even maybe a little bit of Daria Goombawale. But if Pierce plays a lot in the final preseason game, that doesn't bode well for his chances to make the roster. And I would think that maybe the Texans should go about trying to explore life after Damian Pierce via a trade. And look, if nothing comes up with a trade, uh, then go ahead and just move on. Cam Akers, Daria Goombawale, one of the rookies. And Joe Mixon can be your running back room. The other rookie can find himself on the practice squad, maybe with J.J. Taylor as well. And you have a bunch of guys in the building on the roster and the practice squad that can execute the offense and know the offense should you ever need to turn to those guys. And, and maybe this is a over-talked about point because if Mixon's super healthy, he's going to get the bulk of the carries. The number two carry guy on the Bengals last year 44 carries. Yeah, that's right. Number two in carries on the Bengals last year, 44. You don't have to have a whole heck of a lot of other carries outside of Joe Mixon if Mixon is right. So maybe we've belabored this point too long. But moving on from Damian Pierce, if he's not cutting the mustard, uh, that would make sense. And if you could get a maybe move up in a round from a trade perspective because you send him to someone else, maybe right up 45 Cowboys could use him, then that would be a benefit for the Texans. And a new start would probably be a benefit for Damian Pierce. Great personality, seems like a great guy and a great teammate. It just hasn't clicked to the level that I feel like it needs to click from a football standpoint. Akers, Goomba Wale, and even the rookies from time to time have been better. One little side note, British Brooks played a little bit of fullback in this practice. Something to keep in mind as uh, cutdowns start to show up here in the next uh, few days or so. They got a joint practice preseason game, and then boom, you could start seeing guys 
uh, turn in their playbooks shortly after that. A minute here for my new friends at Autograph. Autograph is a free to download and use app that puts all your Texans content in one little space. And it's not just the Texans, any of your teams. I've got it downloaded. It's got my one-stop shop for Astros news, my Texas Tech Red Raiders. And of course, you can catch my Texan stuff right there in the Autograph app. You read articles, you watch videos, you listen to podcasts, and you earn coins that then turn into rewards down the road. I'm talking about ticket rewards, merch rewards, autograph rewards, and so much more. Autograph wants to reward real fans for being real fans. It's real simple, right there in the app. Get the download of the free app. Use my code STOOTS, S-T-O-O-T-S, when you sign up and start following the Texans and have that one-stop shop for all the content that you'll need on the Texans, including yours truly, right there in the autograph app, my good buddy, Tom Brady. Okay? I say buddy because I'm telling you about his app. He invested in this app. He helped create this app, and he wants real fans to have real big rewards for being big fans, and you can get that with the Autograph app. More information in the link in the description down below. Number two in the four big takeaways from the Texans training camp practice, the wide receiver battle continues to be a tough one. Just like I can't tell you for sure who two, three, and four on the running back depth chart are, I can't tell you for sure who five and six on the wide receiver depth chart are. And look, if Noah Brown is not ready to go to start the season, say he has to begin the year on PUP, this gets a little bit easier to figure out for the Texans. It still doesn't become all the way easy, but it gets a little bit easier. Obviously, Brown would eventually be coming back if he starts the year on the physically unable to perform list. So you'd eventually have to make a decision on the wide receivers. But if Brown's good to go from day one and you got two spots, along with Tank Dell, Stephon Diggs, and Nico Collins, you get two spots in a six wide receiver uh, room on the roster. I would tell you John Mechie's on there. Mechie had an incredible catch today. And the biggest thing for me with Mechie, and I'll describe the catch here for you in a second, is consistency. Putting it together day after day after day. That's not something he was doing early in training camp, but has some good practices, has the preseason game that he did. And then the catch today, I was standing right there as he caught the ball. Davis Mills hawked the thing, sent it down the field, and the ball skips off of C.J. Henderson. You see John Mechie the whole time. You can see his eyes navigate where the ball was. As the ball kind of pops up in the air, Mechie rips it down, touchdown. OK, had some success in the one on one reps as well. I would tell you, Mechie is very much for me gone from, you know, the seventh guy, the eighth guy to absolutely the fifth or sixth guy for this team. I don't know exactly where he is, but if you told me he was the fifth wide receiver for this team uh, the day after cutdown day, I'd believe you. I certainly would. Now, figuring out who the guy is with him. I'm leaning Xavier Hutchinson. I just like the youth. They run the ball with Hutchinson a little bit, and though the special team's usefulness is less than a guy like, say, Robert Woods, who can return punts for the team, I just feel like there might be a little something there with Xavier Hutchinson, and boy, did he have a great catch. It rivaled Mechie's catch. Davis Mills, again, launched the ball, and a DB was right there on Xavier Hutchinson's hip, and Hutchinson came down, falling down with the ball with just one arm and caught the football, had another one in a red zone uh, set a little bit later on as well. So Mechie and Hutchinson, like most people believed when this thing got started, to me have jockeyed into the position five and six. That would mean no Robert Woods. That would mean no Steven Sims. That would mean no Ben Skoranek as well when it comes to the wide receiver room. But this wide receiver battle, the pecking order in five, six, seven, and eight, and who might be in the conversation for a practice squad spot, and maybe just maybe Nick Casario could get on the phones and whip up some interest in a late round pick for Robert Woods, and you could get something for Robert Woods because he's not going to make the team as it stands right now, as I see it right now. So that's uh, something to watch as cut down day uh, approaches and training camp practices begin to wrap up. Just one practice and one preseason game left in the preseason slate for this team. Then they'll start making decisions. And boy, running back battle, wide receiver battle, it's been fun to watch. And, and those guys have not left much out there. Okay. I would tell you that a lot of those guys are leaving it all out there every single day. Uh, you know who left a little bit out there, but took plenty 
in this practice was C.J. Stroud. It wasn't perfect by any means, but, man, C.J. Stroud's navigation when things get messy around him is so good. He hit Joe Mixon on a little dump-off pass that was great to see, and he hit Damian Pierce on a little dump-off pass. Pierce caught the ball, took off down the field probably 20 yards before defenders got to him. But Stroud's navigation when things get nasty and his ability to just take something quick when the big developing stuff is not there, is something to pay attention to. He's talked about how he doesn't have to make big plays. He doesn't have to roll out of the pocket and try to make some 20, 25-yard pass down the field. And they would love for him to play within some of the structure. Uh, can't go broke taking a profit, as they always say, the old football cliche about little dump-offs and short stuff. But even some of the short stuff that he – uh, attempts to execute is not just like a little dump for four yards. Sometimes they've got stuff 10, 12, 14 yards down the field, and he's got a guy eight yards over the field, and then boom, next thing you know, it's second and short because C.J. Stroud takes what is there and what the defense is allowing him. He did have some absolutely great moments when the offense hums, man. When the offense is rolling, it is going to be so hard to stop. You see Stephon Diggs and Nico Collins and Tank Dell all in the field with Dalton Schultz and Joe Mixon, that starting offensive line that's Tunsil Green, Scruggs, Mason, and Howard, and you see exactly how it can succeed. And I know I've talked a lot of times about how the out route for Diggs, Collins, and even Tank Dell, uh, it's like the crane kick and the karate kid. When it's done correctly, you can't defend against it. Well, they were crushing the middle of the field. And Bobby Slowick drew up some uh, really impressive ones that just had Tank Dell and Stephon Diggs running free over the middle, taking care of their business. And, man, when Diggs gets the ball in his hands, and they've talked about this, the Texans have, they really like him as a runner. So I know you think about Diggs, big plays, you know, he's caught the ball, they, you know, DB's right there. and But, like, they like to get him going, head of steam over the middle, get him the ball and let him take off with the ball in his hands. He did that in practice. Now I say, you know, it was good. And then, you know, the bad of CJ Stroud was he was a little off early. He sailed one to Stefan Diggs in one-on-ones where there was a miscommunication between the two. And then he sailed one in one of those early team portions. And it was right into the lap of Kamari Lassiter. Stroud also threw an interception late in the two minute drill. Uh, when you had to get into the end zone, I mean, there's no other choice. He had to throw it deep and try to get into the end zone, try to uh, make up a lot of yardage in a short amount of time. I couldn't see exactly who had that interception, um, but Stroud, really good today. A couple of hiccups here and there, but again, I just like that short, easy stuff, that navigation in the pocket from C.J. Stroud. I like what he's bringing to the table there, and well, I can't wait till Indianapolis week one. He's going to pick those fellers apart. Speaking of picking people apart, man, Kamari Lassiter was giving Tank Dell the business on one of those early reps. He got in there and was able to bat the ball away. Dell couldn't come up with it. Lassiter has been really impressive, and he's the fourth big takeaway on this one. Look, we know what Derek Stingley brings to the table. We know what he is, but Kamari Lassiter was one of the bigger question marks about this team. The guy opposite Derek Stingley, who was going to do it? Was it going to be C.J. Henderson or Jeff Okuda, the you know, former disappointing top picks, or was it going to be the second round rookie from Georgia who people thought were slow? And I'll tell you this right now, I have never once in training camp and we're 18 training camp practices that I've got to see with my own two eyes. I've never once thought Kamari Lassiter's looked slow. He has never looked football slow. So he might be workout slow, 40 times slow. Kamari Lassiter is not football slow. He is right there with those guys. Every step of the way when he is locked in and in good coverage, the locksmith, when he gets locked in, he's fun to watch. Look, there's going to be some rookie moments for Kamari Lasser. It's not going to be perfect. He's not going to be, you know, a Derek Stingley copy and play to that level. But he's going to be better than a lot of the guys drafted ahead of him in the 2024 NFL draft. There'd be some GMs wishing they'd made a different decision. There'd be some prognosticators eating some crow. Maybe they'll wash it down with some Kool-Aid. I wanted Kool-Aid with Kinstry, and they ended up with Kamari Lassiter. Initially, I wasn't too happy, but I, I saw the vision, and now I definitely see the vision after the training camp practices from Kamari Lassiter. Man, it was a fun one at training camp, the next-to-last training camp practice, the final one. You do not want to miss it. 
The breakdown tomorrow is going to be epic. The Rams are in town. Sean McVay brings the L.A. Rams to town for joint practices. What a way to finish up training camp. What would you make of the big takeaways today? Let me know in the comment section down below. And how excited are you for joint practices wrapping this sucker up when it comes to training camp practices? That's going to be a fun one. Let me know in the comment section down below. On your way down there, throw me a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And check out the description and learn a little bit more about our friends at Autograph. It's an app that's free to download. Sign up with my code Stoots, S-T-O-O-T-S, and just consume stuff about the Texans and you'll get rewarded and all the different rewards that come down from merchandise discounts to special offers to down the road, free tickets, playoff ticket discounts, man, there's so many different things that autographs going to bring to the table. And all you have to do is be a fan, real fans, real big rewards with my friends at autographs. So check them out in the link in the description down below. We'll get you signed up on your phone again, free to use your one-stop shop for content. You see these videos right there on the Autograph app. You see the Houston football stuff right there on the Autograph app. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Appreciate you watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it. And I can't wait till we talk Texans again soon.